Henry Purcell is one of the greatest composers of the Baroque period and until the 20th century was England's greatest composer. He was from a musical family who lived very close to Westminster Abbey and as a youngster was made a chorister and then assistant to the organist. During this time, he learned his craft composing mostly vocal music whenever the opportunity came his way. Later, he split his time between writing sacred, that is religious, music for the Abbey, royal commissions and music for the theatre. Today, over 300 songs of his survive. Purcell died aged just 36. He is buried in Westminster Abbey, next to the organ he once played. One of his popular instrumental compositions is the rondo from Abdelazer Suite and it exists in many arrangements. The word rondo is related to the word ritornello meaning, something that keeps returning. The form of a rondo is usually, A, B, A, C, A, so theme A, the main theme, keeps returning and repeating. Let's listen to the version played on a church organ. You may recognize the theme and even have performed it yourself as it's popular with high school level orchestras. The piece was also used as the basis of Benjamin Britten's orchestra work The Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra a superb piece with a narrator with the specific purpose of introducing people to the different instruments in the orchestra. I'd encourage you to click on one of the links to either watch a live performance or to follow the full score. It's a superb piece and a brilliant way to familiarize yourself with the different families of the orchestra. Incidentally, Benjamin Britten is arguably Britain's greatest composer of the 20th century. First then, the whole orchestra, and afterwards each section in turn, will play the theme written 250 years ago by the great English composer Henry Purcell. Before the Baroque era, the church dominated society and composers were employed to write sacred church music. In the Baroque, however, and especially by the time of Bach, Handel and Purcell, the church was no longer the main patron of the arts and therefore could no longer dictate everything. Royal courts were growing richer and more powerful, and they could afford to pay composers for their work. This gave the composers the freedom to experiment without being penniless and much secular, that is non-religious, music was produced. Along with the change, instrumental music flourished and the term absolute music was coined. Absolute music meant making music for music's sake, not relying on words or passages to determine the rhythms and pitches used. Much instrumental music was in the form of dance music. Different dances, such as the Alamand, Courant and Ajeg were devised and they were packaged together into what was known as a dance suite, or a collection of dances. Although a little different to the club dance music of today, the idea is much the same and the combination of dance and music became a popular form of social entertainment. Although Baroque composers continued to produce a fair amount of religious or sacred music, secular instrumental music became more important and Purcell, like Bach and Handel, was commissioned by wealthy patrons and royalty to write ceremonial music. A good example of this would be his trumpet tune.
Another more somber example is Purcell's Funeral March for Queen Mary. It was written and performed for the funeral of Queen Mary II, which was held in Westminster Abbey in 1694. Take a look at the harmony and chords for the funeral of Queen Mary. The interchanging of major and minor chords, especially chords 1, 4 and flat 6, create a very melancholic feeling, not so unlike many popular songs. Listening to the chords in this way, do you think you could use them as a basis for a popular song? In particular, use of a minor fourth degree adds a melancholic feeling to the phrase's endings. Here is another song that uses the minor four chord to create a tinge of sadness at the phrase endings. Purcell's music also included sacred choral music, chamber music and music for the theater. His music for the theater included both opera and incidental music, songs and instrumental pieces to be performed as part of a play. Music for a while, the GCSE Pearson set work, is an example of incidental music as it was composed to accompany scenes from the play Oedipus. Purcell's most famous work, the opera Dido and Aeneas was written in 1689 at age 30. Dido's Lament, one of the main songs from this opera, has many similarities with music for a while which was written three years later. Both pieces are tragic love songs and make use of word painting and ground bass, As mentioned, in the Baroque period with the church no longer dictating the type of music composers wrote, new freedom of expression meant that composers could bring great emotion to their music. A theory called the doctrine of affections was created. The doctrine's principal idea was that the primary purpose of the arts was to awaken the feelings of the soul. Composers were finally able to express emotions through their music. However, the effects were not necessarily for expressing the composer's own emotions. Instead, they tended to focus on more general emotions, like joy, sorrow, love, hate, wonder, and desire. Surprisingly, the evocation of emotion in music was very calculated and planned. For example, only one emotion was to be evoked per movement or short piece. Baroque composers embraced the proposition that, with the right combination of tonality, harmony, melodic intervals, rhythm and tempo, Music is capable of arousing a variety of specific emotions within the listener. In very simple terms, for example, a slow, soft piece in a minor key, with some dissonant chords and chromatic intervals in the melody might be used to evoke the effect or emotion of sorrow. 
Composers and performers from the Baroque and Classical periods were much more tonally sensitive than audiences today and often a composer selected a particular key because of their emotional connection with that key center. For example, B minor is believed to be Bach's favorite key of all time, because he used it for so many of his highest quality compositions. Compare Dido's sorrowful lament heard earlier to Handel's music for the Royal Fireworks. A bright, loud, up-tempo orchestral suite with the addition of triumphant brass and percussion. The Royal Fireworks Suite was commissioned by King George II, in 1749, to mark the end of the War of the Austrian Succession, an eight-year territorial dispute involving most of the European powers. His Majesty wanted to celebrate the treaty signing, with an event of grand proportions, and the performance in London's Green Park, was accompanied by a fireworks display, involving nearly 10,000 rockets and 101 cannons. Have a listen, and I think you would agree, Handel hit the mark with this commission, which would have created a feeling of joy, celebration and elation at the first performance. The music is still used for such occasions, over 270 years later. In the same way that composers in the Baroque worked to commission and tended to focus on evoking specific emotions in their music as a very calculated way, contemporary film composers of the century work in much the same way. Take for example the soundtrack to Joker, the 2019 American psychological thriller film based on the DC Comics character of the same name. The music is composed by Icelandic composer Hildur Guðnadóttir. After reading the film's script, Godinet Odier was asked by the director to write some music based on her feelings of the Joker screenplay. Rather than creating complex melodies and harmonies, instead she focused on the element of texture to create a dissonant, but relatively uncluttered sound world that she felt resonated with the deep feeling of sadness and melancholy of the main character. With the title, Dido's Lament, and lyrics like, When I am laid on earth, in other words when I am dead, it's fairly easy to work out that the emotion expressed in this song is one of sorrow and heartbreak. With a quick glance at the score you will see that it is a slow, soft piece in a minor key, with some dissonant chords and chromatic intervals in the melody. Further investigation will reveal the use of word painting and very specific use of appoggiaturas, suspensions and melisma in the melody to highlight the meaning of certain words. In Purcell's Dido and Aeneas, Dido's lament happens at the end of a simple and sad story. Aeneas, whom Dido loves and has agreed to marry, believes he has to leave her and go to Italy. Dido sings a lament before stabbing herself as Aeneas sails off to Italy. <laughs> 